So the bee vac method is basically a vacuum that's used to suck the bees up. So there's different types of bee vac on the market. Some work better than others. The key to a bee vac is to get a bee vac with a tube that is not corrugated on the inside because as the bees are sucked down that tube, if it is corrugated, it will break the wings up, it damages the bees and it's not good for the bees. So you need to get a, a nice tube that's got a smooth inside to the pipe. When you suck the bees down, they'll go down into the vac and you want to put something soft in there like a cushion or some, some fabric so that when the bees land into that area, they have a soft landing which they can go up into the hive that's at the other end of the bee vac. So bee vacs are really helpful if you're doing a cutout or a live bee removal because you can just suck up some of the residue bees that aren't on the honeycomb and that maybe have moved into the wall space or the chimney in that void where the bees were. So what bee vacs don't do and the problem with bee vacs is it's quite cumbersome, it's quite a lot of equipment to carry around. What bee vacs don't do is remove bees from a wall or void space from the outside of the void space. There's a misconception here as to buy a bee vac and I can suck the bees out of the wall. So that doesn't work because honeycomb, the way it's structured in the void space is you've got slabs of honeycomb and brood comb. Now, if you imagine you're sucking the bees out from the outside of, of an air brick, chimney, or wherever the bees might be, that's only going to suck a few of the foraging bees that are around the entrance. Bees aren't silly, they'll sort of, sort of work out what's going on and you won't suck out all of the bees within that void. It just won't happen, even if you left it there all day. Because bees have different jobs within a colony. You'll have foraging bees that leave the colony every day. You'll have worker bees that only feed the larvae. You'll have a queen that only lays eggs and moves around and breeds with some of the drones that are in the hive. These sort of bees that work in the colony don't leave the colony. So that's a large number of bees. So they wouldn't go anywhere near the bee vac anyway. So what a bee vac doesn't do is suck the entire colony out from the entrance point as to where the bees are going in. So and to give you an example, we had a client that phoned us up and who had got someone to come around, I think it was a beekeeper, and which is great, and they came around to try and suck those bees out from outside, and obviously it, it didn't work. He, I think the beekeeper got enough bees, enough worker bees into his bee vac to what's known as split a colony. So he actually introduced those worker bees into his own hive, which is why he was quite keen to go out. And that's fabulous because at the end of the day, he is saving bees, but it's not actually solving the problem that the person's got within their property because it didn't remove the worker bees inside that void space. It only removed the foraging bees and therefore all of that honeycomb was still left within that void. We went in and obviously then dealt with that and removed the bees and the, the comb from the building. So it's really important to remove the honeycomb from where the bees were because it'll attract more honeybees in the future. If they can get a free meal, they will, and other bees will find it highly attractive to swarm onto and to recolonize. So unlike wasp nests, honeybees will use an old colony. It's a bit like us buying a house. It's a lot easier for us to move into a house that's already built than it is to actually start from scratch and build a home. So honeybees are really efficient insects. If there's remaining comb or brood comb or honeycomb in there, it's just gonna be more attractive for them to move into that void space. Another problem with leaving comb is that you can get other secondary pest infestations. So we've had rats eating honeycomb before, mice. We've had wasps, hornets. We've also had things like wax moth eating the comb and then obviously the wax moth fall down when they're at larvae stage and they start coming out into the building. We've had them fill up down lights and fall down chimneys and walk across carpets. So you can get a lot of secondary pest infestations from honeycomb that's left. The other bad thing about leaving honeycomb is that it can start to smell. So the honeycomb doesn't smell itself. That often crystallizes or melts if it's hot. So if it's in an area where it gets hot, it can melt and then drip down into the building, which is another problem. But essentially it can smell because the brood comb the brood comb is what's got larvae in. The larvae are a protein-filled maggot, basically, and they will die because no one's feeding them. So if that's not removed and that's left in there, that can start to smell, and that's not great. Another bad thing about leaving honeycomb in buildings is that it can be a disease source for other 
colonies of bees, especially if that entrance point is not sealed off, because other bees will try to rob that honey from that void space. They may then take any disease that colony had back to beekeeper hives or other wild colonies.